friends. So here is a very important topic for setting up your home studio. That is, how do you dispose of dirty clay water? Now I know it's not the most sexiest topic out there, but if you ignore this and throw your dirty clay water down the drain, you're gonna really damage your building's pipes. So let's get into this. So why do we need to worry about putting clay water down the drain? Well, basically it will just clog your building's pipes. Uh, clay will sit into all the curves in the pipes um, and it will eventually build up and clog them and this can be a hugely expensive problem to deal with. It's just not worth the risk because disposing of clay water in the proper way is really easy. So here, here I have some dirty clay water. Hmm, delicious. <laughs> Normally I keep this in a bucket, but I put it into these clear jars just so I can show you. So all the clay is suspended in the water. There's more dense clay on the bottom and fewer clay particles on the top, but all of this water that you can't see through, you're not gonna wanna put down your drain. The first step is to let it settle. So I have a second jar here. Now this jar has been sitting for a few hours and you can see the water on the top is quite clear, whereas all the clay has settled to the bottom. This is the first step because the first thing you wanna do is get rid of the bulk of that water and you can actually pour off all of this clear water right down to where the clay starts, just into your sink. That amount of clay going down your drain is not gonna be a problem so long as you just pour this top clear part. So now you have a few options for what to do with this remaining part. If this is purely clay, you can actually just use it right away. You can recycle it into slip. I mean, it, it basically is slip right now. So you can use it for, for example, attaching two pieces of clay together or slip trailing or whatever you use slip for. Or you can actually just recycle it into clay. I've already done a video on how to uh, take this and turn it back into clay. So I'll link that down below. However, if it's not pure clay, like I always have extra clay water from cleaning up or whatever that has like dog hair and dust, you know, from the studio and random crap in it that I don't want to go back into my clay. So what do you do with that water? That's what I'm gonna be covering next. The most common type of clay filtration is simply a gravity filter. This is simply a more complex version of what we just did, relying on gravity to separate the water from the solids. For those not processing a large amount of clay water, just one bucket or a plastic tub will work just fine. When I was first starting and I was just working occasionally with ceramics at home, I used one of those large plastic tubs and then I just washed all of my tools into that tub. Now I just use two buckets. One I use while I'm washing my tools and then one is purely the filtration bucket. Whatever you'll do, you want to let it sit undisturbed so that the clay can settle to the bottom and the water can rise to the top. Then when you're ready to dispose of some clay water, you'll simply pour off the clean water before adding more dirty water to it. Whatever you do, you'll want that filter bucket to sit undisturbed between making sessions so that the water and the clay can separate. Then you just repeat, you pour off the water on the top, uh, pour the dirty water back in, and you keep going until you have a large amount of thick clay slip that you need to dispose of. Now, if you're wondering what to do with that, I will get to that in a moment, but first I want to explain to you the last filtration option. So. What do you do if you're processing a lot of slip? This is what I do in my own personal studio, so I'll explain to you what we do there. So now we're getting into the professional filtration territory. The first step is always to just recycle as much clay water as you can. I always keep my dirty clay water separate from my dirty cleaning water for this exact reason. When you do this, you have less volume to manage, so it's a little bit easier for you, and then you can save as much clay as, as possible. The clay bucket, aka the slip bucket, gets the water poured off each morning after it's settled and separated into slip and water. The water floats to the top and I pour it off. Once the bucket is full of slip, I'll use it for clay recycling. Whereas the cleaning water, which I don't want to save, gets poured straight down the sink and into the filter. So you'll want to get what is called a gravity filtration system. Well, all of us are gravity filters, but this is like a more professional, uh, we'll say multi-chamber gravity uh, filtration. 
By the way, you don't have to buy these. You can actually uh, build them yourself. Um, I'll link down below the filter that I have. I have a commercially made one, but in my previous studio space, I had a sort of DIY one, and I'm sure I still have the design for that. So I'll link that down below as well. So the water goes in like this through a hole up here, and then it goes out through a hole down here. This drawing here has three chambers. You can have as many as you want. The more chambers you have, the cleaner it will be. And then between each chambers, it will have holes going down so that the water going in, the level will never be higher than here because it will go in here and then go out here. It will go in here and then go out here. It will go in here and then go out here. And each time you have a filter, all the clay particles are going to go down and the clean water will stay on the top. So this first chamber will be really full of clay and then the next chamber will have a little bit less clay and the last chamber will just have a small trace amount of clay. And then the water going out is actually quite clean or at least clean enough that you don't have to worry about your drains getting clogged. So the last and final question is what to do with that stinky clay water. And yes, it will be stinky. It will be stinky and black and full of mold. Um, yeah, it's not the funnest job. We have to scoop our filter uh, about once every two weeks during the busy period. Um, but if you're just working for yourself at home, you might only have to do this once a year. It really depends on how much volume you're producing. So what you do with the nasty stuff is really, it really depends on your resources. So we live in the city, um, so we just double bag it and we put it in the landfill. So we scoop it out with a ladle, put it into a bag and just dispose of it uh, in our trash bin. I feel okay about putting this in the landfill because we only produce about three liters every two weeks of garbage. And the rest of our studio is pretty uh, self-sustaining. Like we don't have a lot of output besides the pottery um, and not a lot of waste. So I feel okay about this. Of course, if you're not as crazy busy of a studio than mine, you'll produce even less waste. Now, if you're blessed to have a large outdoor space, a lot of potters simply just bury it. When you do this though, you have to be very careful that you're not having glaze chemicals or any sort of oxides or any harsh chemicals that you wouldn't want want in your soil if you just have clay and you know uh, skin cells and dog hair and uh, you know whatever dust in your studio it should be fine definitely keep a separate uh, bucket or disposal place for your glazes and your oxides and you should dispose of those in a responsible way clay is earth anyway so you are just returning it back into the earth By the way, if you're wondering why I have a second tank next to the filter, this has nothing to do with filtration. Rather, our workspace wasn't designed to be a studio, but instead a cafe. So the water access wasn't exactly where we needed it. The second tank is simply a place for the pump to live that pumps our wastewater through this garden hose, through the wall, into the kiln room, formerly the kitchen, uh, where the water access actually lives. Yeah, it's a little DIY, but it works great. So I hope that was helpful for you. I hope I explained it clearly enough. Um, but if you have any questions, just write them down below and I will definitely get around to answering your questions. Otherwise, check out all my other videos. I cover a lot of different topics from uh, pottery and making tutorials to other fun studio maintenance how-tos. If there's any topic you want me to cover in the future, also please write that down below. And for more behind the scenes in my studio, you can find me on Instagram at Pottery to the People. Otherwise, I wish you a safe, healthy, and creative week. Bye, friends.